Okay, this is part two video to setting up Uniflow. Um, so where we left off in our last video is, so we created our tenant, blank tenant. We created two users, John Doe and me. We created a group. We linked a copier to our device, to our tenant. Uh, we created a price book and gave it some pricing. We also created two scan profiles with these little icons. Um, under gear, we did some stuff with the dollar sign and users. So now we should be ready to actually use Uniflow on the copier. So what I'm going to do is flip over. This is a nifty little utility if you are an admin person, Canon Remote Operator Viewer. It can be obtained on usa.canon.com on their free site. It's where you get the drivers. It's in the list. But it allows you to operate the copier remotely which in our case is going to be nice so I can demo this. So I'm going to log in. This is my pen code. And it says, hey, you're Ken Scoville. So the way it knows that K Scoville, if yours has a bunch of numbers and it's not your name, like we said in the last video, Uniflow runs on identities. So I made a username called K Scoville. That's where that's coming from. So if you don't have one of these, you might add one. Uh, this is also how print jobs will be accounted because the way Uniflow works is it reads the print the job log of the printer and it it's absorbing your username from the job log so you may need to tweak your username on your print driver <coughs> but we may show that in a later video so so far I've used my pin code I've used my username um, we're going to flip back over to the video so you can make copies. It'll track me because it knows who I am. So I can make copies. There's nothing new interesting in there. You probably could do that before you did Uniflow. What you probably couldn't do before you did Uniflow was scan to Google. And you may have now a scan to myself. And here again, if you're an admin watching, there's no address book. There's no SMTP configuration. This all is just going to work as long as it's connected to the cloud. It's going to run through Uniflow servers. So I have a piece of paper on the glass because I'm doing this remotely. And we can hit scan. It creates a little preview. So you can change, see things. And we'll hit next. And it just emailed me. It's that easy. Now I'm going to hit the scan to Google. Scan to Google is initializing the first time I've done this. And basically what this is saying is you have not set up to allow, this user has not allowed Uniflow to communicate with its Google Drive. So it now has sent me an email. So on another screen that you guys probably cannot see, it sent me an email basically saying, do you want to authorize Google to, uh, to put this document on your, on your device? And I am I'm going to say uh, I'm going to go on the other screen and authorize that real quick. So on the other screen, what you see basically is a link. That link is going to say Uniflow wants to access your Google Drive. You're going to say allow. It's going to basically make you log in Google one more time that you are the person you say you are. And, you know, basically it's just going to say OK at that point. You've authorized. So once you have authorized, we should be able to hit this setting. Now it's letting me go ahead and go. So now I've, I've allowed that link between the two software packages. And it was that easy. It doesn't take any admin interface. All you get is an email to say OK. I'm going to hit Next. Now what this is doing is reading my Google Drive. So in my Google Drive, I have all these folders. And I should have a folder somewhere called Temp. So I'm going to hit my Temp folder. I'm just going to say, yeah, put it in there. Hit OK. It's going to name it this. That's fine with me. Hit OK. And it just put it in my Google Drive. So it's that's how easy it is to set up Scan to Myself and Scan to Google with very little admin inter overhead. Um, normally, if we are going to use scanning, a lot of times we'll hide this button. We don't use it anymore. The this button is the copier interface to scanning. 
where you do have to set up an SMTP and information like that. But a lot of times we would just hide that and we only have the copier and the scan buttons. But you can log out and we'll flip back over here. And the only other thing really to show is um, reports if you want to run, if you wish to run reporting. So we'll run a report as me because I'm really the only one who's had activity. Um, I'm recording this on this date. So here's all my scan stuff I've been doing. You can look at user summary. I'm the only one who's really been using the machine. I've done five scans. I've made one copy. It's been black and white and so on. So you can get reporting out of the system. So Uniflow Online Express, if we remember, its feature set was we secured our device so you can't walk up and make copies anymore. You have to tell me who you are first. I've set up two simple workflows, both for free, and I can generate reports. All of this is for free. And even as, a, as an admin person, it's very nice because now you only have to manage an address book here in the cloud. Much easier if you have a large staff. Um, and it, most of it is user, once you set them up, it's basically the user sets up the link between their accounts and Uniflow. So that is really Uniflow Online Express in the simplest version. And I'll, I'll probably make some other videos more complicated on uh, so maybe some scanning things. You can lock users down. So if I want a black and white only user, I can create one. So let's say I get this question a lot. You're a small church and you want to allow them access to the copier but not the color aspects. They should only be able to make black and white copies. So you can make a user that has a black and white only functionality. Uh, and let's say that black and that general user that can make black and white copies, maybe we don't want them to scan at all. So you can kind of hide the scan button. So you have a lot more flexibility now that you're identifying yourself of what you can do versus others. Um, and maybe another video on tracking prints. How does that work? Because I referenced the username. Maybe some videos of that manner. So look forward to that in the future.